Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll tell you how you can get expert advice to improve your cattle care. Plus, tips on low stress handling that'll make a positive impact on your operation. And now, a special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. As the voice of the cattle industry in Washington, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is making a difference for cattle producers. Every day, the staff in DC work on a number of policy and regulatory issues that could impact the US beef industry. We've got an update on what's happening in Washington in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. On September 17th, the U.S. Department of Agriculture announced that it would be rolling out a second round of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, also known as CFAP2. USDA's Farm Service Agency is going to be accepting applications for CFAP2 starting September 21st. Uh, we are pleased to see that the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the administration is going to be using unspent funds uh, from the original Coronavirus Food Assistance Program to provide further relief to our producers and cattle producers across the country who have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, the initial CFAP payments served as an important stopgap in the immediate wake of the pandemic, but ultimately many in our industry are really still reeling uh, from abnormal marketing decisions they were forced to make throughout the spring. And CFAP 1, while it was an important first step, really didn't get us there in terms of equitable assistance. Uh, CFAP 2, we know quite a bit about the program already. We've heard plenty from our producers on it. And overall, I, I think it's a really good deal. Uh, the CFAP 2 uh, cattle assistance payments are going to be structured quite similarly to CFAP 1's Part 2 payments, uh, which were based on uh, inventory. And so, Basically, producers out there who are interested in applying, they need to talk to their FSA agents, but they can pick uh, the highest number of inventory on a window ranging from April 16th through August 31st, take that highest inventory number and multiply it by a rate of $55 per head. Uh, right now, only marketable animals are going to be eligible for CFAP2 payments. That means that breeding stock is not eligible, called cows are not eligible, but there are some nuances there. Uh, Born calves in 2020 and replacement stock intended for breeding but have not started breeding yet are going to be eligible for the program. So again, just take that highest inventory number, any date of your choosing between April 16th and August 31st, multiply it by $55 per head and uh, that should be your CFAP2 payment. Uh, the payments to livestock are focused on market inventory because there were limited funds available for CFAP2 and the Commodity Credit Corporation Authority that fully funds the program really is meant to assist uh, for costs associated with market disruptions. And so that's really why breeding stock are not eligible. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to work with Congress on some additional assistance or relief moving forward. CFAP1's incurred loss payments had the potential to deliver a tremendous amount of relief, but an arbitrary cutoff date left many producers out in the cold. Put simply, April 15th marked the height of the crisis, uh, but there were producers who incurred losses just as severe in the days following April 15th as those leading up to it. You know, we are thrilled that the CFAP2 uh, inventory payment is going to get our producers who were only eligible for that CFAP 1 Part 2 payment, uh, a little bit more of an equitable assistance payment. You know, we're grateful to President Trump, U.S. Secretary Senator Sonny Perdue, and the individuals in this administration who have worked tirelessly to deliver assistance to cattle producers and agricultural producers at large across the country. Uh, you know, meaningful support throughout this time. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and events from Washington, D.C., one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. When you join, you'll get the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from Washington that provides valuable insights on the key policy initiatives that may impact your business. To join, just call 866-233-3872, or you can visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll tell you how you can get expert advice to improve your cattle care. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to CaseIH.com forward slash livestock for more. This is Hard Brand Cattle. Family owned, family run, prime focused, and home to the largest and best source for Akushi genetics in the world. U.S. commercial cattlemen are buying our bulls because they work. If you raise Akushi cattle, we have a buyback program. Our cattle grade 45% USDA prime, less than 2% select, averaging a 2.8 yield grade. It's time you earn premiums over commodity prices. Akushi provides beef customers with the best beef eating experience. Visit us at heartbrandcattle.com. NCBA has worked hard to provide practical and useful information to cattle producers through a variety of webinars and in-person events. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has forced NCBA to move most of its educational programs online, but you can still get valuable information to put to use on your own operation. Here to tell us more is Chase DeCoit. He's NCBA's Director of Beef Quality Assurance Programs. Chase, how has the stockmanship and stewardship program been adapting this year to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, we had to start getting uh, nimble this year because as COVID-19 progressed and, and the ability to meet in person in a manner that would be, you know, conducive to all that stockmanship and stewardship is about, not just getting together to learn, but also getting together to learn from each other, to share with one another, um, and to really just enjoy each other's company. We learned that that just really wasn't uh, likely to be a, a, a possibility for the stockmanship and stewardship program in its traditional sense. But we got nimble and so we've decided to go virtual and we are going to host uh, a one-of-a-kind virtual event that includes the same uh, demonstrations that everyone has come to know uh, and value from the stockmanship and stewardship program and also bring in a slate of excellent speakers uh, from across the country. You know, one of the, the cool things uh, about going virtual is that we now get to pick speakers from all over the place uh, and and people will have access to the best and brightest in the cattle industry, uh, no matter where they're from. So that's one of the, the coolest and most exciting aspects. We look forward to everyone uh, joining us November 11th and 12th virtually uh, in this new experience that I think uh, everyone is is actually going to enjoy. So tell us about the group of experts you have leading these events. So our traditional uh, stockmanship clinicians that uh, so many of the cattle industry uh, members know and love, Ron Gill, uh, Kurt Pate, uh, and Dean Fish are going to lead some excellent demonstrations uh, right there live uh, from the ranch uh, and, and, and bring uh, to light uh, the same high quality information that everyone knows about low stress cattle handling um, and, and learn from that. But in addition to that, we're gonna have speakers uh, talking about the topics of animal welfare, bringing in some of the best uh, animal welfare scientists at the leading uh, land grant universities. We're gonna have a, a panel um, of breed specialists talking about new genetic tools that can be used to advance your herd. We're gonna hear from cattle facts uh, about the current markets. We certainly know uh, so much has happened because of COVID-19. They're hopefully gonna deliver us uh, some forecasts looking forward about what the cattle industry might look like going forward. Um, and we're just gonna to bring together uh, a, a slate of, of, of diverse speakers, diverse topics, but all of them uh, applicable to cattle producers across the country. Exactly what can producers expect from these virtual events? they'll be able to expect uh, interacting live with these speakers. So we're going to have our speakers available for Q&A just like you would uh, at an in-person event. You'll be able to chat your questions in. You'll be able to voice your questions uh, aloud and those speakers will be able to interact with you. Uh, you'll be able to uh, 
access those presentations later on. You know, one of the things about attending an per in-person event is that once you've seen that presentation, you may not be able to go back and reference it. But if you attend this virtual event, you'll be able to come back, you'll be able to rewatch a session, uh, and, and you'll notice that our agenda is pretty packed and pretty aggressive. We'll have multiple sessions going on uh, throughout the day so that you can pick and choose what you're most interested in. But you'll also be able to come back later and watch a session you maybe didn't get to watch live, um, and you'll have, you know, access to those speakers to ask those Q&A. So I think everyone's going to really enjoy the ability to uh, learn from the best about what they're most interested in and, and take away uh, some of the, the most important information uh, to help their operations be successful. So in your opinion, why are programs like this so important to the long-term success of the beef industry? The beef industry is always moving forward, is always progressing. Um, and those that uh, take the time and the initiative to learn about what's new, uh, apply those learnings to their operations, they're best suited for the challenging times. And 2020 has shown uh, that there is no shortage of, of challenges that can be faced uh, in the beef industry. But those that are aware of, of programs that are available to them, aware of best practices that they can put uh, into, into place on their operation, all of those uh, components come together to being a successful cattleman or cattlewoman. Um, and so uh, staying in tune, being committed to to continued education uh, and being the best cattle producer you can be uh, is right where stockmanship and stewardship fits in. It's the ability to uh, learn about practical knowledge that can be applied uh, to continuously improve your business. What other online or virtual opportunities does NCBA offer cattle producers? And more importantly, what's the cost of these events? Uh, I'll answer the, that last question first. Our stockmanship and stewardship event for the first time is going to be absolutely free. So we're going virtual and there's no cost to attendees, which uh, is, is able to be done through the continued support of Merck Animal Health, uh, the continued support of the Checkoff funded Beef Quality Assurance Program, both seeing the value um, in providing these educational programs to uh, cattle producers. Um, additionally, uh, NCBA has made a whole suite of our uh, educational offerings available uh, in a virtual manner. W throughout the year, we've increased the number of Cattlemen's Webinar Series uh, events that we've done. Uh, and so people can log on to those a couple of times a month, learn from those. Uh, the Cattlemen's College uh, series, there is a promotion making that available at no cost in 2020 because of the lack of in-person uh, educational events. We knew that those were valuable to producers uh, and made those available through the rest of the year uh, at no cost. So I would encourage producers to go to ncba.org. Uh, click on the producers tab and get in there under producer education, see all the virtual opportunities, take advantage of them because almost all of them are at no cost to the producer right now. Um, and they're the ability to learn from the comfort of your home or the comfort of your office uh, and learn how to apply those, those uh, learnings. Thanks, Chase. Now, as Chase mentioned, there is an abundance of learning opportunities you can take advantage of right from your own farm or ranch. Just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on these can't miss virtual sessions. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll hear from another stockmanship expert as Ron Gill shares some great advice on how to safely work cattle. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Grass is the center of our universe. We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on. That's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. Today, we're talking about NCBA's regional stockmanship and stewardship clinics and their value to the cattle industry. One person leading these events is Dr. Ron Gill of Texas, 
a renowned stockman who always provides great advice to producers. He joins us now with some valuable tips on working cattle. As you start to bring cattle into an alleyway or the next corral, whatever it might be, the best thing to do is push them away, once again, from where you want them to go, get your movement started, and bring them forward. This particular design is similar to what a lot of people have done for a long time, and they try to angle a fence uh, to where they can funnel the cattle into this area. What it actually does, though, is kind of prohibit the handler from being where he needs to be when the cattle start coming around. But that angle keeps you from being up at the front, putting pressure on the cattle you'd like to see. This one is not a severe angle, so it's not too bad. But once again, it, it does kind of limit. I'd rather have square pins than I would have one at an angle coming into an alleyway. This is another different situation because we have to go around a 90 degree turn coming in this alleyway and send the cattle up. So we don't bring too many at a time because they'll wind up balked at some point and then you lose your motion and movement going on up. So I try to fill the front section and then come in and fill behind them so we don't have too many cattle in the alleyway. So now I'm just gonna go toward these heifers. Once again, I have to get some movement in them so I might as well get it away from them and get them positioned where they need to go. Once I get some of them started around, and hopefully I can put enough pressure on them to go on in the alleyway. Once again, I'm just gonna put pressure, step back, let some more flow. If I wanna stop the amount I have in there at one time, then I can take this group on up. If you had enough people helping you, somebody could come behind you and fill the rest of the alleyway. And working an alleyway, you wanna kind of work it like a dog border collie might, go back and forth across if you're working by yourself. And once you get the cattle up here, they're then quiet and ready to go through the processing area. It's interesting when you do that, look behind us, we have cattle actually f filling into the alleyway behind us when nobody has asked them to come. All right, as we are ready to reload the sweep tub and crowd alley, we don't want to use the sweep tub or a bud box or any other crowding area as a place to warehouse cattle. It's a flow through part of the system. It allows, the sweep tub allows you to use the gate to go ahead and push some cattle around that don't want to flow through. But in this scenario, we're not going to put anything in there until we're ready for them to go into the chute or into the lead up to the chute. So now we're going to do the same thing we've been doing out in the pasture, in the corrals. I'm going to go from here to the cattle, push them away from them, get some motion and flow started in the cattle. So as I step to them, they're going to start moving away from me. I don't want to hit them with this gate, so I'm going to give them a little time to come out of that corner. Once we get the flow started, we wouldn't even have to open or close that gate every time, but once again, as I step to them, I won't get flow started. Try to bring about five at a time on these size of cattle, so I can step forward, close my gate. As the cattle move forward, then I'm gonna push this gate toward them. They'll start coming around. Put pressure on the cattle right here to get my flow started. Then I can bring the others to them. But we can do all that without any noise, any pressure, any hot shots, anything we can get our flow started through our chute. I also notice I didn't use the crowd gate or the sweep tub at all. All we did was use it to position the cattle to go in the lead up to the chute. A lot of times in systems with a sweep tub, we'll have cattle that and we won't have a return box or something like that. So we'll just put cattle into the sweep tub. And if the person that's working the sweep tub gate stays back here behind them, he's actually drawing their attention away from the opening. The best way to do that is whoever puts the cattle in the sweep tub to close the gate and leave it then let whoever's in front walk down the side 
and get some motion started in these cattle. This is very good representation. It takes a little more time to get cattle to flow out of one of these than it would if we actually set it up right and didn't use it to hold cattle as they come through. But even though it's a little slower, the cattle still float out of the tub when we use our body position. All right, we're ready for more cattle to come into the sweet tub and swing this gate away. Now, I'm not gonna let the cattle just come in right now. I'm not set up really to do that, to get my flow like I'd like it to be. Step to them, let them come around. I'm gonna let this one come with them. Once again, as we get them pushed to the other corner, then they'll be ready to set up and ready to come back around the gate. All right, once again, we want our cattle flowing through this system. We don't want to hold them in here, so I'll wait till they come to the back. Let them start working themselves out of that corner. I need to put pressure on the front to get my flow started. If I don't work on the front, these cattle won't start in this chute because it's doesn't have the right angle. Once that happens, then I can bring more cattle. Now here I'm holding my position. You could do it with a gate, but why not do it with your body position? Once again, there's no stress on the cattle. All I do back up, let the rest of them come in. So if we can get establish that flow, position ourselves correctly, the cattle will learn how to work. In addition to Ron Gill and Kurt Pate, Attendees will get great advice from Dean Fish, manager for the Santa Fe Ranch in Arizona. Kay Maher had a chance to talk with Dean about the passion he has for educating cattle producers. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we have the fortunate opportunity today to talk to one of the true industry leaders uh, in cattle handling and facilities design, Dean Fish. Um, Dean, you put on a lot of demonstrations across the country every year. What are some of the key topics that you want producers to take away from these demonstrations in terms of, of cattle handling? Well, thank you, Kate. We focus on low stress cattle handling and, and more importantly, effective stockmanship. You know, now in the beef industry and cattle industry in particular, we're asked to invest a lot in our cattle and our genetics and our vaccines. But stockmanship is truly the one thing that doesn't cost anything to improve, but will benefit and return to that producer multi times what they invest into it. So, so we truly believe in that message. We truly believe in the partnership that Beef Quality Assurance has with Merck and the stockmanship and stewardship program. They put on a really, really nice show every year at the, at the annual cattle industry conference. In addition to that, you reference a tour. We go out throughout the country and bring that to people's backyards so they can learn some of these low stress um, handling principles and, and learn about stockmanship. And I think today, now more than ever, with the beef industry um, kind of under the consumer scrutiny that it is, animal welfare is a top concern for a lot of consumers out there. But you made a point, the good news is it probably doesn't take a lot to, to, to tweak um, somebody's cattle handling practices or even some of their facilities, maybe. A absolutely. And, you know, I really try to think about it. I'm not really in the cow-calf business. I, I raise cow-calves, but I'm truly in the beef business. People want to know where that food comes from, how that animal is raised. And as part of my obligation, my duty is just to make sure that I'm I'm doing that in the best way possible. And I think producers need to have that in the back of their mind. So whether they have a nice bud box, whether they have a sweep, a tub, uh, old narrow V crowd, there's different ways to be effective in how they handle those cattle that would be acceptable to the public, but also allow them to be effective in how they work with their animals. What would maybe one point of advice be that you could give somebody um, on how to, one thing that they could change to handle, handle their cattle a little bit better? One of the things that was key for me to learn is to know when to apply pressure, but know when to release that pressure. So that release is so important. That's the reward that that cow or that horse get for doing a good job. And so the proper application of that pressure, but also the proper release of that pressure is, is key. If you go to a Ron Gill or a Kurt Pate session, they'll talk about different types of pressure. We can put a driving pressure, and that's usually our presence in that flight zone where that cow will want to move away. Um, and again, it's usually our presence. We're trying to use minimal or no noise. We're trying to use 
minimal or, or no flags and, and certainly not um, hot shots and so forth. Um, but the calmer we are and the better that we're able to apply that pressure with our presence, um, the better job that we'll do. And again, understanding how we relieve that pressure is, is also the second key part of that. And you know, we are all in the beef business, whether you have 10 head of cattle or 10,000 head of cattle. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. In terms of cattle um, handling facilities and facility designs, what's some things that producers can do that maybe aren't necessarily high cost that can improve some of their, their facilities? Right. There's some there's some really neat things. Um, and most important is, is thinking about where do cows hang up in your facility. And so finding out why that is. Maybe it's a shadow. Maybe it's um, a distraction that they're having. Um, maybe you're pushing too hard or, or, or whatever it is. And try to figure out those little things that can make a difference in the way cattle flow. So find out where those little log jams are and then try to correct those. There's some great resources on the Beef Quality Assurance website. There's a wealth of knowledge and, and resources out there. Free cost for producers to go and look and try to make those little tweaks. That'll make it go a little smoother for them. Excellent. Thanks, Dean, for your time today. Thanks for the expertise that you bring to this industry as well. You, as Dean mentioned, a lot of online resources and there's some stockmanship and stewardship events coming probably to your part of the country. So be sure to check out our website, stockmanshipandstewardship.org for those. Um, get BQA certified. And with that, Kevin, we'll send it back to you. COVID-19 has forced the Stockmanship and Stewardship Program to pause its in-person events. Instead, this fall, cattlemen and women can take part in high-quality virtual sessions with the cattle handling experts. Just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on these can't-miss educational experiences. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll visit a stockmanship and stewardship event in Colorado and hear from some of the participants. Stay with us. We'll be right back. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. We're highlighting NCBA stockmanship and stewardship clinics and the hands-on cattle care training they offer to participants. Let's head to Colorado where Brian Baxter takes us inside another of these regional events. Just outside Fort Collins, the Ag Research Center at Colorado State University was packed for two days with cattlemen and women gathered to sharpen their cattle handling skills. The Stockmanship and Stewardship Program is really a real hands-on way of producers being able to understand the low-stress cattle handling skills uh, that they can implement on their operations and see the benefits of these as they work their cattle, as they process their cattle in their everyday lives and implement them uh, so that they can understand the operational benefits of that. NCBA has helped put together a stockmanship and stewardship regional tour because we produce cattle differently in different parts of the, the country, but stockmanship is still a key component no matter where you are and, and how you raise cattle. So today we have about 180 or 190 people registered to come learn about stockmanship and stewardship and um, learn more about cattle handling, care of cattle, um, and those important topics. With speakers such as Colorado State's Temple Grandin, a panel of beef producers sharing their own experiences at the cow-calf and feedlot level and the chance to ask questions during a hands-on demonstration of low-stress cattle handling methods, it's no surprise the event in Colorado was a big draw. Here at Colorado we have producers um, from New Mexico, Wyoming, Kansas, all coming in here to Fort Collins, Colorado uh, to learn about these skills and these practices that they can implement on their operations. So these regional tours allow us to bring producers in from a wide spread area of the country um, to a single location with a lot of impactful information that they can implement on their operation. The event included small group sessions on topics designed to help producers more easily work cattle through a chute, load them onto and off of a stock trailer, and gather and sort cattle the low stress way. All of these are practices that should work to create easier handling, better performing cattle. 
I think there is some economic benefit to stockmanship and stewardship. And actually today we've got some speakers on our program that are talking about some economic considerations of good stockmanship. And um, I'm really excited to see what they have to say, but really when it comes down to it, of course we're trying to get the consumer to eat our product and ensure them that what we're doing is right, but it does come down to dollars and cents. And if you can do things the right way, you're gonna save yourself money in the end. The common sense says, sure, if you work cattle better and they handle better, they're going to breed back better, they're going to gain better, and those things. But I see results. Is What I like to see is I'll go to some different places, and they'll start changing things. They might do it different than I would or whatever, but you see the results. The cattle handle better, they wean better, they gain better. There's more appreciation for cattle that have been handled correctly, I think, at the next level. And so they're looking for ranches that are handling their cattle a little better and embracing the stockmanship component and the stewardship component of it as well. And they're willing to pay a little more for those cattle because they know how they're going to perform. For those who attended, whether they were cow-calf producers or feedlot crew members, there was real value in the beef quality assurance training and continuing education. We just recently got into providing um, ranch to table beef and our customers are saying it was so important to them to know where their beef came from. And this adds uh, just another dimension to us as far as our reliability and the quality assurance that our customers are after to have the kind of beef that they want to serve their families. For us, we're older, but we're still learning. And so we just felt like we needed to be here. I think especially I, I like to know more about how the industry is and for the cattle handling uh, mainly understanding the cattle behavior and, and the way that you posture with the cattle I think should be one of those things I can definitely go there and apply. The message is it doesn't matter if you're large or small that there's a certain protocol that we all need to follow in being good stewards of the land, good stewards of the livestock that we raise. And when we, when we do that, then we can call ourselves good stockmen. As valuable as the information was, producers also appreciated that this regional event with two days of hands-on learning, expert speakers, BQA training, and meals only cost them $75. I made the commitment to come before I looked at the price. And I remember the moment that I saw $75, that is really inexpensive. And then when you look at the value of the meals, the food has been awesome. It's, it's worth far more than $75 investment. It was very inexpensive for, I felt like the value to, um, for us to be here was, was amazing. They could have charged double and we still, I still felt like we got our money's worth. We work on keeping the cost to attend these uh, reasonable for producers. We know that the information is valuable and we want to reach the producers with this valuable information. Um, and so we don't want this to be a cost prohibitive event. We want this event to be something that every producer uh, can attend, whether they have five cows or whether they have 5,000 cows. We want this to be an event that brings cattlemen together to learn about the best practices for our industry. From the Stockmanship and Stewardship Regional Event in Fort Collins, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. These Stockmanship and Stewardship events are supported by the Chekhov-funded Beef Quality Assurance Program, and the BQA principles form the foundation for all of the lessons. Libby Bigler, the BQA coordinator for the state of Colorado, organized the regional event held at Colorado State University. She told Cattlemen to Cattlemen that good stockmanship and BQA are closely connected. The Beef Quality Assurance Program and stockmanship and stewardship really go hand in hand. Um, stockmanship is all about how we care for our animals, things like low stress cattle handling, um, just understanding um, how cattle think and those kind of things. And if we can understand that and handle cattle in that manner, we're going to help reduce bruising, we're going to help reduce stress, and stress obviously reduces immune function. And, and then as those things compile, we have more issues with quality. And so if we can start the foundation with good stockmanship, we're not going to have to worry about those BQA topics as much down the road. And so they really, really do work hand in hand. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattlemen to Cattlemen or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit YouTube 
and subscribe to the Cattleman to Cattleman page. You'll find an archive of all of our shows, including valuable educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. So check us out on YouTube. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll look back at some past stockmanship and stewardship events and share some great cattle handling tips. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Welcome back. NCBA's regional stockmanship and stewardship events provide valuable education to producers of all ages and skill levels. Brian Baxter has more on how younger producers can really benefit from these clinics. The regional stockmanship and stewardship event held in Clemson, South Carolina drew a crowd. And while there were plenty of experienced cattle producers at the event, there were also a number of young producers and students on hand. I brought a group of students from Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College to the Stockmanship and Stewardship event here at Clemson. It's, uh, it's the closest to us to be able to come. And the reason why I really urge these students to come is because they were going to have an opportunity to see some people who are really the, the industry experts in this, they're Kurt Pate, they're Ron Gill, they're people I teach them about in class. They get to hear industry experts that are just outside of their own small areas and that's key because they can go back and they can do what they need to do on their own place. We're seeing more and more young people go into farming that don't have a background in farming. And I think an occasion like this is a great time for them to pick up um, good information from experts in the cattle business and learn things and help put good calves in the market. In two days of sessions, the group had the opportunity to network and learn about beef quality assurance and improved cattle management. Of course, one highlight was the live cattle handling demonstration presented by experts Kurt Pate and Ron Gill. What I want to do here now, if I want them to make a left-hand turn, I'll just speed the right side up a little bit. If I speed this right side up, if they kind of pick up and go faster, the right side goes faster, I'll draw these in and that'll make a left-hand turn. So the way to turn cattle from behind now, if I want them to go the other direction, I'll just speed this side up. If I speed this side up, slow that side down, they make a real easy, nice turn. I thought it was great. I've actually seen them on television and, and, and looked at it and thought, you know, there's a lot more to this than what you think. And I, I really like the calmness about it. I like the way they, they stress being calm and, and the position of where to get to get the cattle to move. A very good experience for me. I, I learned a lot today just looking at it from their point of view. What am I going to take away from this event? You know, a lot of the speakers have spoken on how to handle cattle, the proper way to do things. And, That'll, that'll be a big thing because at home, you know, we don't necessarily do everything right, so that, that'll be a big part. And the management part that some of the speakers brought forth was, was really good and hit home and, and showed me ways that I can better our, our industry at home. Whether new to raising cattle or a lifelong farmer or rancher, the stockmanship and stewardship events deliver valuable education to producers of every kind so everyone in the beef industry gets better together. I think sometimes we get in our own little area and we forget about really the big picture. What happens with those calves whenever they leave our place? What does that mean in terms of that consumer who has no contact with production agriculture? I tell my students, I always think about it from the perspective that you would go out and eat what you produce. And that's what you're doing. You're producing a product that somebody that is hundreds or thousands of miles away will consume and it makes a big difference to them. Regardless of the size of your operation from uh, five head all the way up to 50,000 head, um, the NCBA Producer Education Program, Stockmanship and Stewardship, BQA, um, are designed for all cattlemen, and that's intentional. It takes time and effort to be a part of the cattle industry, but ultimately we need to do our due diligence to provide a safe, 
quality, wholesome supply of beef to the consumer. And so we do everything possible to make the education opportunities and initiatives that NCBA supports accessible uh, to producers, uh, regardless of size, regardless of location. In Clemson, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. These clinics are led by a great team of experts. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Kate Maher caught up with stockmanship expert Kurt Pate to get his thoughts on the value of these events. Thanks, Kevin. You know, cattle handling skills are important to producers of all sizes, and we're here with one of the experts in cattle handling, Mr. Kurt Pate. Uh, Kurt, I've watched many cattle handling demonstrations that you've put on, and I learn something new every time. Uh, Talk about stewardship and stockmanship and just how it's evolved and how, how producers can really utilize it. So I, I kind of was at the, the beginning of this thing. I got lucky and, uh, and we did the first one in Texas and then we brought it on to the NCBA convention in Denver one time. And I kind of pitched the idea and, and they went with it. And uh, I thought would just have a couple of times and it has just grown more and more and more. And this new stockmanship and stewardship program that they got in, they've got going now is just, I couldn't have dreamed it would have been so good. They've done such a great job of promoting and bringing folks in for total stockmanship, not just cattle handling, but the whole picture. And that's what stockmanship and, stockmanship and stewardship is all about. And that's a really great point, the, the whole picture. And um, they've, these clinics have been put on all across the country. How can producers of any size, regardless of their region, regardless of their, their facilities, really take these skills back and, and use them? There's a lot of ways to go about working cattle. And what I try to promote for myself, and I come from the horse world where this has been happening for quite a while, and it has in the cattle world as well, but we just didn't know we were doing it. But I try to work with feel, timing, and balance. And that's a, that's a nice three words. And so if we can use feel, timing, and balance, feel it means how much pressure you use or don't use, timing, pressuring at the right time, and balancing the two, then your facilities don't matter so much, your crew doesn't matter so much, your cattle don't matter as much because you fit the situation. So that's what I try to promote with the things we do in these cattle handling demonstrations. Common sense is hard to teach. Field timing balance is hard to teach. And so I think Ron and I have kind of a good combination of two different styles, kind of, but bringing them together. And when people walk out of here, they have ideas to go home with and think about yeah, absolutely. And there's there's additional benefits other than just uh, lower stress on the cattle. It's it's what other benefits to producers are there in terms of safety and economics even. Yeah, uh, and and that's the big thing we need to start proving in in our world is what. It's really hard to gauge what handling loading cattle on a trailer or loading cattle on a truck, right? What effects the cattle handling or the stockmanship makes because there's so many different variables. So that's the next thing we have to do with our stockmanship and stewardship is get proof that stockmanship does make a difference on the bottom line for safety and I say for human stress or non-stress. You made a comment earlier about the cow-calf producer being the backbone of this of this mm -hmm. industry and, and uh, as a former cow-calf producer myself that is really close to my heart and I appreciate that. Um, again, why do we kind of need to all be on the same page in terms of what we do and, and doing it well to make sure that we're producing the beef that, the beef that's going to end up on plates? So back to the consumer, I mean, we actually, the, the, cow, the backbone is really not selling to the consumer. There's a few different people in between there. But with being the backbone, we have to get that resource and start it out so whoever takes it from us can go on and produce that protein or that great piece of eating, that great eating experience farther down the line. So I think it's so important that we all get together and there's so many different ways, so many different breeds, so many different styles, so many different grasses, all these things that we can argue about. But there's so many different consumers out there, we can all provide something for everybody. And if we do it right, we do it uh, environmentally right, and we do it in a way that is sound, that the consumer can look at us and say, we can, we can do that. I, I think we're on the right track. And I think good stockmanship that you teach is definitely a common denominator among, among all producers. So thank you. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, uh, I look at this whole thing, and I don't care if you're a grass finishing producer or working in a, uh, in a dairy 
or you're a high level Wagyu producer, or if you're finishing cattle in a large feedlot, the stockmanship is always a component of it. And the way those cattle, I, I, if cattle chew their cud, I think we're doing good. If they're not chewing their cud, we're doing something wrong. And that doesn't matter what, what breed or what level of the industry in. So I try to get cattle lay down, get full, chew their cud and be happy. And then, then I think we're doing the right thing no matter where we're at. I agree. Kurt, thanks always for your insights. It's so nice to talk to you every time we see you. Thanks again. I have fun. Kevin, we'll send it back to you. Remember, because of COVID-19, the Stockmanship and Stewardship Program is hosting virtual sessions this fall. Just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on how you can take part in these high quality educational experiences. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere. Reimagined by you, for you. With improved visibility, better maneuverability, and more ways to customize. So you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. Out of the box for the Rewrite Side of Rodeo. Three audio books, rodeo novels by Baxter Black. A total of 23 hours following our cowboy guys and gals on the road to the finals. Rambunctious, exciting, kind-hearted, and funny, of course, $39.90. CDs or downloads, BaxterBlack.com, 800-654-2550. On the road to the rodeo, horse show, state fair, ball game, or grandma's house, climb on up and take a ride with me. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. I didn't have time to watch the moon rise over the mountains last night. I'd gone out to get something and noticed a glow on the silhouette of China Peak. And then as I watched, the curve of the moon tipped over the rim. It was golden as an egg yolk and it lit the sky. How beautiful, I said aloud to myself. And it continued rising, declaring itself so fast you could almost see it moving. I heard the horses bang the feed tub I glanced back over my shoulder at the moon. The top third of it sat on the jagged edge of the Earth's incisors. It was sneaking up on the valley. I stared a moment. Something that big ought to be making a sound, I thought, like a rumbling locomotive or a creaking timber. Maybe the moaning of high line wires in a windstorm. I listened. Nothing but a night bird and the distant humming of a truck on the highway. And then I remembered that I'd promised to call my neighbor. He wanted to borrow this tampon bar. So I headed back to the house and as I did, I noticed the canyon was dark, but the tops of the trees were sparkling, like they'd been sprinkled with glitter. Man, I said to myself, it's too bad some photographer isn't here to capture this incredible picture. I stepped up on the porch and I looked back to the east. The moon shone like a yellow headlight waist deep in a pool of dark water. Gonna be full tonight, I thought, as I walked in the house and made for the phone. The screen door slammed behind me and my lost opportunity. I didn't have time to watch the moon hang itself in the sky. A scene so timeless, it's been watched by Neanderthal men and Pharaohs and Moses and Michelangelo and Pancho Villa, Garth Brooks, but not me. I didn't have time. I had to make a call. This is Baxter Black from out there.
Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy our visits with you each and every week. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening with Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. We keep you posted with information about upcoming shows, farms and ranches we're visiting around the country, and we share legacy photos too. So check us out on Facebook. We're back with more right after this. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin alone. Add Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With two dewormers from two different classes, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Do you have an upcoming production sale to advertise? Then contact the Cattlemen to Cattlemen marketing team to learn more. Stockmanship and stewardship are skills that get passed from one generation to the next. And each week, viewers send us great shots of family members working side by side on their own operations. Let's check out some of them in this week's Legacy photos. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week, right here on RFD TV.